I dare you to consider how a baby changed everything. How the postpartum cries from a manger signal the definite demise of the enemy. Oh, how pleasant it is to daily internalize the meaning of a baby who changed everything. For long ago on a midnight clear, hope for humanity replaced condemnation's fear. So now joy resounds within my spirit when I reflect upon a baby who changed everything. Where once eternally lost, it is now possible to be eternally found. Where once helplessly blind, I got a shot to see. I pray you have claimed the promise that a baby truly has changed everything. Our God is a God of second chances. His love being proven on two occasions. Once when he made man, the other when he saved a man. And so we gather here today to honor the baby who has changed everything. So join me in praise, accompany me with thanksgiving, and leave no doubt that the baby, now a living king, deserves nothing less than your everything. Joyful, joyful Lord, we adore thee. You're a God of glory and a Lord of love. And our hearts just unfold like flowers before thee. And we hail thee as the sun above. So melt the clouds of sin and sadness and drive the dark of doubt away. You're the giver of immortal gladness. So fill us with the light of day. Lord, fill us as we pray. Amen. Amen. thankful that he's Emmanuel God with us have you come to praise his name have you come to bless his name then you may be seated in the presence of the Lord it is my privilege to welcome you to the Riverside Chapel Seventh-day Adventist Church where we are extending God's grace and empowering God's people 
And what better Sabbath to extend God's grace upon than a Sabbath when we are celebrating the time in which God extended the greatest gift of grace when he allowed his son to be born in Bethlehem. Emmanuel, God with us. God coming to dwell with his people, coming to relate to his people, coming to inhabit with his people. And we have come together to worship as his people and to extend that grace to others, believing that that grace can empower us as a people. Just turn to your neighbor and let them know that God is a good God. Let them know that God is a great God. Let them know that you are thankful that God is with us. Can you say amen? As we welcome you during our Christmas celebration, the theme for our service is Call Him Jesus. And we want to remind each and every person that Jesus really is the reason for this season. We want to begin our service by inviting our Pathfinder director, Brother Tony Brown, to come forward at this time. And our Pathfinders have a very special presentation to make to the seniors of Riverside. We want to invite our Pathfinder director to come forward as we begin our celebration acknowledging the seniors of Riverside. Oh, that was quite, kind of quick there. <laughs> um, uh, last Sunday, we made uh, some cards for our seniors. Uh, we thought it'd be a special time to give recognition to our seniors uh, on this Sabbath. So I want to call all my counselors down front, please. And also my Pathfinders as well. If you're a Pathfinder, please come down front. Once again, we want to thank our Pathfinders for recognizing our seniors during this holiday season. Let's give them a hand. We want to welcome a few other individuals who are worshiping with us. I believe that Corey Thomas is here. Is Corey here? Where's Brother Corey? Corey, we want you to stand up, man. Where is Corey? Where is Corey? Where is Corey? Where is Corey? He's not here? Is he coming? Not yet? When he gets here, you interrupt me and you let me know. You interrupt me. My brother will look forward to interrupting me and letting me know. I want to recognize Alamade Alibi, who is here worshiping with us from Lincoln, Nebraska. Alamade, would you stand? A friend of Lorraine and Michael Polite, as well as myself and Jennifer, we thank you for worshiping with us. I also understand we have a Patrick Gardner who's worshiping with us for the first time. Patrick, would you stand or raise your hand? My brother, so glad to have you. Welcome into the house of the Lord, a friend of Michonne Breeses. We want to welcome, welcome Jock Gilliland, who is worshiping with us with Greg and Kim Onesie. Jock, would you just raise your hand? Praise the Lord for you, Jock. So glad to have you. I also believe that we have a Devin Swanson who's here for the first time. Devin, would you stand or raise, raise your hand? Praise God for you, my brother. Are there any others who may be worshiping with us for the first time? We want to acknowledge you and welcome you into the house of the Lord. Just raise your hand if you're here. Maybe there's some others who are worshiping with us from out of town. You're back spending time with your family. We want to allow you to raise your hand or to stand. Welcome, my sister. So glad to have you. The Bible says that we should forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. That means that we are not to be engaged in our salvation and our relationship with the Lord in isolation, independent of others. We are to be a family of believers. And one way that we can show ourselves as a family is to stand together at this time, give somebody a handshake, give somebody a hug, let somebody know that the Lord loves them and so do you. But you must first go to someone's name you do not know or someone whose name you cannot remember. Let's welcome one another to worship at Riverside. We are celebrating the birth of our Savior. So we want to invite you to stand as our minister of music and our mass choir lead us in a medley of Christmas hymns. 
Good morning. This is your opportunity to be a part of a really large choir. So will you stand on your feet now? All of the words for our carols will just include the first verse of four very familiar Christmas hymns that we enjoy singing. And since we only get to sing these but once a year, sing them with all the enthusiasm and gusto that you have because we're not singing for our glory. We're singing for the glory of God. Brother Derek Lashley on the organ will now lead us.
afternoon, church. As I was listening to Joy to the World and thinking about today, you know, the thing that's amazing about the Christmas story is Christ, if you read the story like in Matthew 2 or Luke 2, you know, he appealed to everybody. Like the common shepherds, you know, they weren't educated people. They were just shepherds. And yet the angels came to them to tell them that Christ had been born. And then the wise men were actually scientists. When you read the spirit of prophecy, they were scientists. And the Lord used astronomy to show them that the Christ had been born. And then you think about Anna, the widow woman. You know, whether you're married or single, Christ was appealing to everybody. But you know, as I was reading it, the thing that stuck out in my head more than anything was that basically 10 people outside of his parents knew that Christ was born. I mean, think about a nation of millions of people, including a group of people who had the truth that didn't know that Christ had come. And you know, Sister White says there's basically three things that kept them from not, kept them from knowing that Christ had come. The first thing was pride. You know, when the wise men went to the church and said, there's supposed to be a king here, they were like, who are you? Like, the wise men weren't Israelites. So they were like, how can you tell us any truth? You know, and so they missed out on knowing that Christ had been born because of pride. And so the Lord was impressing me that we can't let pride keep us from knowing that he's going to come. You know, because we're celebrating today the baby being born. And the only reason that's a big deal is the baby's coming back as a king. You know, and if we make their mistake, if we don't let anybody tell us anything because of pride, she says that the other thing, the other reason they didn't know was because they didn't study prophecy. You know, the way that the Israel, the um, wise men, they were sitting on the fields discussing the prophecy about the Christ child should come. And they were saying, he should have been here. You know, if we look at prophecy, he should have been here. And that's when the angel appeared. Everybody that the angel, everybody that knew Christ had come as a baby were studying prophecy. And so I said, Lord, I don't want that to happen to us. I don't want us to have an Easter program and a mass choir and a Christmas thought and we miss the second coming. You know, I don't want pride, somebody to try to tell us the truth and then pride keep us from missing out on a second coming. You know, because history will repeat itself. So I'm asking the Lord to help us not make their mistake. Don't let us come to church every week and miss out on the second coming because of pride or because we're not studying prophecy. She says they were going to church. They were going to church. They were putting on programs. But she said instead of focusing on Christ, they were focusing on getting wealth. They were focusing on power within the church. And they were focusing on worldly honor. And she said, every time the truth tried to come, unless it brought wealth, worldly honor, or power, they weren't interested in it. And I said, Lord, I don't want that to happen to us. I said, I don't want us to come to Riverside for generations and miss out on the second coming. So I'm asking you, today we're going to pray a little different prayer. We're going to pray that we don't miss his second coming. I mean, everybody's going to see it. Let's pray that we don't, we're ready when he comes the second time. So if you have a prayer request, I want to encourage you to come forward. If you want to stand in the gap, you know, saints, we, Christ is our Savior. So that means he can save us from depression. He can save us from poverty. He can save our marriage if we want him to do that. And so I want you to come forward and stand in the gap if you're okay for some that you know are struggling. And if you don't want to come forward, it's fine. If you just kneel where you are, please. Righteous Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, thanking you that your son Jesus came as a baby. Lord, if we had needed money, he would have come as a banker. If we needed intelligence, he would have came as a scientist. Lord, if we needed 
any other thing other than a savior, he would have come because that's how much you love us. But Lord, he came to be our savior, Emmanuel, God with us. So that if we're having marital difficulty, Lord, you can fix it. You know, it's not your will for us to be unhappily married. You're not saying just stay in it and take it. You're saying, let me fix it. And so, Lord, I ask you to touch hearts, Lord, because Satan is attacking. You know, he's trying to break up families. But we need you, Lord God. We need you so bad. We need you to reinstitute family worship. We need you, Lord, to put listening ears within our hearts. And, Lord, help us not to be too proud to say I'm sorry and too proud to forgive. Help us to be like you, Lord. Lord, our children have done things that have embarrassed us. Help us to forgive them. Lord, if anybody understands what it's like to have embarrassing children, it's you. And so, Lord, instead of you being angry with us, you tell us that we did wrong, and then you stand by us while we do right. And so I ask you to give us that heart, Lord. Please help the parents to be reunited to the children. Help the children to be reunited to the parents. Lord God, help us to seek you. As I was reading, Lord, about the Israelites at the time of Christ's first coming, Lord, they were in the church. They were working in the church, but they weren't doing activities that were drawing them closer to God. And so as Michael preached to us last week, a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Polite, telling us not to be so busy in church work that we lose Christ. Help us, Lord, not to do that. Help us as leaders, Lord, to make decisions that will draw the members' hearts to Christ. Help us to not institute programs and then ask you to bless them. Help us to ask you, what should we do? And then follow your lead. And Lord God, there's a whole world out there. It's just surrounding Riverside, Lord. These people, they don't know Jesus. Forget the Sabbath, they don't know Jesus. And Lord, I don't want us to spend 2010 coming to Riverside and at the end of the year, we haven't brought anybody to Jesus. I care, Lord, that families are broken up. I care that people think drugs are the only way to happiness and prostitution is the only way to money. Lord, there's another way. And I know what knowing you did for my life. I'm asking you, Lord, to give us the Holy Spirit. Don't let us be comfortable just coming here every week with the same people. Put this passion in us, Lord, for the lost. Help us to be born again. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for so much how you blessed us. I ask you to bless our leader, Lord. He's a really good pastor, and he takes his job seriously. And I ask you to let your divine anointing continue to be on him in a mighty way. And Pastor Polite, too, Lord, I just thank you so much for blessing us. We didn't deserve it, and I ask you to help us to do right by them. In the name of Christ, I pray and thank you. Amen. How many of you here today have more than one name? Maybe you have a first name, a middle name, a last name, a maiden name, a nickname. But I can tell you one person who has many names, Jesus. Some call him the lily of the valley. Some call him the bright and morning star. Others call him the bread of life, the word of life. But I call him Jesus. Jesus, why? Because he will save me from my sins. Now, I don't know about your sins, and I don't know what you need to be forgiven of, but God, in his infinite wisdom, one day sent his only begotten son, Yeshua. I call him Jesus. And so today, you will hear in music and in narration in video presentation, many ways that remind us of how important this name is. What's his name, church? What's his name, church? What's his name, church? Amen. As Jesus and his disciples went from town to town, uh, people joined and, and traveled along. He addressed them once using this story. He said, a farmer went out to sow his seed. Some of it fell on the road. It was trampled down and the birds ate it. Other seed fell in the gravel. It sprouted but withered because it didn't have good roots. 
Other seed fell in the weeds. The weeds grew up with it and strangled it. Other seed fell in rich earth and produced a bumper crop. Are you listening to this? Are you really listening? His disciples asked, well, why did you tell this story? He said, you have been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. There are others who need stories, but even with the stories, some of them just aren't going to get it. Their eyes are open, but they don't see a thing. Their ears are open, but they don't hear a thing. This story is about some of those people. You see, the seed is the word of God. The seed on the road are those who hear the word, but no sooner do they hear it than the devil snatches it from them so they won't believe and be saved. The seeds in the gravel are those who hear with enthusiasm, but the enthusiasm doesn't go very deep. It's only another fad, and the moment there's trouble, they're gone. And the seed that fell in the weeds, well, these are the ones who hear, but then the seed is crowded out and nothing comes of it as they go about their lives, worrying about tomorrow, making money, having fun. of Israel and its people will rejoice they will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder for you will break the yokes of their slavery and lift the heavy burdens from their shoulders you will break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian the boots of the warriors and the uniforms blood-stained by war will all be burned they will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince 
of peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven, armies, will make this happen. One December night, over 2,000 years ago, a shining star illuminated a gathering of kings, shepherds, angels, and animals round a baby in a stable. T'was the nativity, and it marked the end of a journey that began on a donkey's back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, hold up there, Jeeves. Yeah, I beg your pardon? Your nativity, that's not exactly how it happened. Here, look, let's start with that donkey. Neither of the gospel stories mentions Mary traveling by donkey. And given the 60 miles of rough terrain they traveled, it's more likely they used a wagon. 
<laughs> Minor details. But then the innkeeper informs uh, them there's no room Again, the Bible doesn't actually mention an innkeeper. And in the Greek, the word inn refers to an upper room in a house, not an actual motel. Oh, blast. Look, wherever it was, there was no room. So, Mary and Joseph were sent to the stable. Uh, no stable. <sighs> not in the Bible either. Now you're catching on. And in those days, most animals were typically kept in a cave. A cave? Yuppers. So it could have been that instead of a stable, the Bible doesn't really say. And the Star of Bethlehem? Duh, that's biblical. Well, we're actually right for once. It's a Christmas miracle. Okay, so now came the shepherds and the three kings. No kings. Three kings is from the song. The Bible says magi, which means wise men. Three wise men? That works. Well, not so fast. While the Bible does mention three gifts, it doesn't specify the number of wise men that brought them. You mean there could have been more? Oh, yeah. A whole posse, even. With a crowd like that, it's a miracle the baby Jesus never cried. What? No crying he makes? That's just a lyric from Away in a Manger, not actual scripture. <laughs> well, of course he was crying. You just added a whole crowd of strange men. Eh, yes and no. There may have been many wise men, but they weren't there that night, you see? Okay, that's enough! Except for the blooming star of Bethlehem, you've just dismantled the most inspiring image of Christian tradition. So what's your point? Point? Well, I guess it's this. Even when all of the man-made traditions are stripped away, the eternal truths still remain. Whether they traveled by donkey or wagon, God brought them safely to the birthplace that was prophesied. Whether born in a stable or a cave, God provided shelter in a strange new land. Whether there were three kings, three wise men, or many, God called the elect to bear witness and testimony to the birth of Emmanuel. So whether your manger looks like this, or like this, the one thing that remains unchanged is this. A baby boy, born of a virgin, this day, in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. Bless you, sir. I'll never look at the miracle of December 25th the same way again. December 25th? Oh, I almost forgot. Stop that. Music!
Then Herod, when he had secretly called his wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. And when they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Behold, I am going to send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, saith the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. He will sit as a smelter and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver so that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old as in the former years.
did rise in Bethlehem, not like any other day. It took a peek to see the babe in a manger filled with hay. How beautiful the colors as the dawn painted the sky. What a way to greet the King of Kings as he first opens his eyes. Hallelujah. To the maker of the earth, the seas and skies, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lord of the sunrise. The sun shone high in Nazareth as it watched the child grow. From the fields into the carpenter shop and wherever he did go. Each day it sent its warming rays and its brilliance did unfurl. How strange it was to be the light for the light of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the maker of the earth, the seas, the skies. Hallelujah. 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 of the sunrise. The sun grew dark at Calvary, completely horrified. Creator God was on a cross, so he ran in fear to hide. But in three days, the sun did shine at the fire. with joy as Jesus rose with all power, with all power in his hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the maker
I can wrap my mind around the first part. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. I I can get the first part. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth for he spake and it was done He commanded, and it stood fast. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. I can get the first part. It doesn't take too much of a leap of faith to believe that there's a being, there's a power, there's an entity, there's a mastermind, there's a creator who's responsible for our existence. Some may deny, some may scoff, some may disbelieve, but I can wrap my mind around that first part. That somebody bigger than you and I is responsible for the sun and the moon and the stars. That somebody's responsible for our solar system and for our galaxy and for this universe. I can get the first part. But it's that second part that, that gives me challenge, that, that gives me pause. Yes, in the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. But the Word became flesh. Not even becoming a human being in the pristine innocence of the Garden of Eden. Not even taking on bones and sinews in the holiness of an earth freshly formed from the hand of its creator. But the Word became flesh after thousands of years of degradation destruction decay the word became flesh after pollution and after violence and vice the word became flesh in an unholy sinful distasteful polluted kind of environment the word still became a part of his creation oh I can get the first part that he created the creation but to become a part of the creation 
Some individuals ask how. How could this God become a babe? How could the Holy Spirit impregnate this virgin? And how could that seed that multiplies and grows be God in the flesh? How could God be in the form of a baby? I'm not interested in how. I'm only interested in why. Why would God want to be with us? Selfish us. Rebellious us. Unholy us. Sinful us. Lusting us. Violent us. There's only one reason to save us. God intersected his life with our lives so that he could save us. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When I teach my 101 Bible studies, I tell a story about how Jennifer and I were newlyweds, and we were living in a basement apartment in Berrien Springs, Michigan. Snows an awful lot in Berrien Springs, Michigan, so they have little window wells that surround basement apartments so that you can escape and the snow will not block you in. The window well is like a little silo. It might be no more than two, two and a half feet deep. And there was a window that you could see out into our window well. And one day as we were looking out the window, we noticed that a mouse had fallen into the window well. It's not that exciting as newlyweds. You're in your bedroom looking out your bedroom window, doing what newlyweds do. We got three kids, the secret's out. And then you see a mouse peering through your window. My wife said, you're the man of the house, you go get the mouse. So I went out and I surveyed the situation. I thought about the fact that I could just leave the mouse. Over time with no food and water, the mouse would, slide, would, would die a slow death. But I really wasn't interested in, 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 in killing the mouse. I considered jumping down and just rescuing the mouse. Aside from the fact that I didn't necessarily want to get too close to the mouse. I realized that I might scare the mouse. The mouse would be running from me not realizing that I'm his salvation. I thought to myself, what if I could become a mouse? And what if I could go down into the window well? Maybe, perchance, the mouse might be more inclined to listen to another mouse. I could get beside the mouse. 
I could form a relationship with the mouse. I could say, I understand you, mouse. I can identify with you, mouse. I've walked in your footsteps. I, I understand your situation. Somebody said that he was made just like us, and he understands us, and he feels us. He's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. If I could become a mouse, I might be able to communicate with the mouse. I thought to myself that I could tell the mouse, you're trapped in a, in, a, in a terrible situation, a condition that is prime for your destruction. But I could also give the mouse good news. I could tell him that in a few moments, a trash can would be let down. And if he were to trust me and get inside of the trash can, he would levitate up. And in a few moments, he would be set free. And that's what Jesus did for you and for me. The Word became flesh to identify with you, to relate with me, to save me. What do you call that? What, 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 how do you define that? How, how, how do you put a label on that? Do you just call it wonderful? Do you just call it counselor? Do you just call it mighty God or, or everlasting father or, or prince of peace? What, what do you call that? The word becoming flesh. Somebody said you just call it Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what does it mean? Savior, Savior. Jesus, Jesus. Savior, Savior. A child is going to be born, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? Because he shall save his people from their sins. Come on, happy Sabbath. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. If you don't mind, let's just worship him. Take a moment just to worship him. Sing bread. 
sent down from glory. From glory. Sent down from glory. Oh, you can just worship him if you want Many to. Many things sing.
Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call him. Savior, Savior. Jesus, Jesus. Savior, Savior. You are the living word. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Go ahead and call him. Go ahead and call him. to let him be Jesus now. Somebody needs to let him be Jesus. He came so that he could be Jesus. The reason why God intersected time and space to correspond and connect with our lives is so that he could be Jesus. There's no other reason he came to be Jesus. You got to let him be Jesus. What does Jesus mean? It means the Lord who saves us. You got to let him be Savior. In order to let him be Savior, you have to admit that you need saving. You have to acknowledge that something is broken. You have to acknowledge that something is lost. You have to acknowledge that there's a problem and that you need a solution. You've got to first admit that you are sinful, that you are wretched, that you are blind, and that you are naked. And you have to allow him to be Jesus. There's somebody under the sound of my voice who's realizing that they need him to be Jesus. You got a life that's broken. You have no peace. You have no joy. Your self-esteem is gone. You don't think that you're loved. You need Jesus. You need the God of the universe to reach down from glory and be Jesus for you. Somebody in this place knows that he can be Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you reflect over the last few months and the last year. You know that he can be Jesus. Oh, yes. He's been Jesus for somebody. He saved somebody and raised somebody and delivered somebody and empowered somebody and taken a situation that was messed up and fouled up and smelled up and he released that thing he he untwined that thing he saved that thing somebody knows that he's Jesus if you know that he can be Jesus if you experienced him this year as Jesus why don't you just stand and acknowledge that he is savior that he is solver that he is deliverer that he is provider, that he is healer, that he is giver. He's Jesus. Oh, all across this sanctuary, we know that he's Jesus. We know that he died to save his people from, from, from. Oh, you know that he can save you from your sins. He can 
take that mistake. He can take that mess and save you from. That's Jesus. Oh, does anybody need to be saved from? Oh, come on, think about the sin that is so easily besetting you. Do you need to be saved from? You need to come right now and call on Jesus. You're coming down saying, I need to be saved from. You don't even have to fill in the blank. You just know you need to be saved from. And the solution is to claim Jesus. You're coming out of your pew. You're coming down right now because you need to be saved from. Just come if you need to be saved from. It doesn't matter what you need to be saved from. You just need to be saved from. Come on, come on, come on. You're coming to Jesus. Come on, come on. You know that you have sin. You don't want to carry this sin over into another year. You need to be saved from. Come on, come on, come on. Praise God. There's another. I know there's more. You need to be saved from. There are people standing in this congregation who can testify to God's power to save you from. Why don't you come and let him be Jesus? Oh, let him be Jesus. Let him be wonderful. Let him be counselor. Let him be mighty God. Let him be prince of peace. But make sure you let him be Jesus. His name shall be called Jesus, for he will save his people from. Imagine your life when you're saved from. Oh, you might be tempted, but you're saved from. You might be wrestling, but you're saved from. No more guilt, no more shame, no more fear. You've been saved from. Does anybody want to be saved from? I'm telling you, Jesus can save you from. If you want to be saved from, harden not your heart. Recognize the fact that you're a sinner and he is Jesus, your Savior. Maybe you've been in this sanctuary all year, but you've never made a personal decision to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Come let him save you from. Come on, come on, come on. Slip out of your pew right now. You're coming down. You're coming to that manger. You're coming and bowing before your Savior and you're giving him permission to save you from. In this moment, it's your opportunity. The God who created this world came here so that you could be saved from. Come on and let him be Jesus. Come on, let him be Jesus. As that chorus is sung again, you just come and respond to Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. He that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Let him save you from, praise God. Come on, there's another, there's another. Come on, come on. Right now the Spirit is speaking to your heart. You know what you're struggling with. You don't believe he can save you from. Try him and find out that he's all right with you. Come on and let him save you from. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Praise God, come on, come on. Oh, we got time, look at the clock, we got time. Time to let him save you from. He stopped all time to come down as a babe to save us from. This is your opportunity. Jesus intersecting with your life. Come on and let him save you from. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let him save you from. That's what life is all about. God saving us from. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, come on. Come on, call on him, Jesus. Call on him, call on him. Yes, 
Yes, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Somebody come call on Jesus. upon your heart don't let this moment pass you by praise God there is power in Jesus he came to set the captives free and he can heal you and me he can touch your body he can save your soul he can fix your relationship. He can take care of your broken dreams and your damaged hopes. He's Jesus. And we're going to let him be Jesus. Because he came to save his people from their sin. As we pray this prayer, we want you to come down if the Spirit moves you. Before we pray, we're going to ask for our elders to go and prepare our fellowship hall because we want to support you and strengthen you and encourage you so that Jesus might continue to save you. Salvation is a process. It begins with a point in time when we acknowledge and A, accept our need and B, believe his power and C, come to Jesus. But tomorrow you're going to be challenged. Next week you're going to be challenged. Next month, next year. And we've got to keep you beside Jesus so that he can keep saving you and keep raising you and keep delivering you. So we're going to start it right now. We're going to ask him to be Jesus. Alicia, come pray for us. Come pray for us. Come pray for us. Somebody go find Alicia Trusty Jones. Ask her to come pray for us. We have some prayer warriors in the house, and we want them to pray that Jesus will be Jesus. If Deborah Bowers is here, go get her. Go find her. We're going to ask our prayer warriors to pray that Jesus will be Jesus. We're going to pray that he will save us, that he will deliver us, that he will redeem us from our sins. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. You're praying where you are privately. You're praying especially for the individuals who have come down to the altar. You're praying that the devil will be broken and that the demons will be taken away at the name of Jesus, that everything will bow. You're praying for the individuals that have come down. Begin to claim forgiveness right now. Begin to claim healing right now. Begin to ask God to wash away their sins right now. 
all over the sanctuary we're praying we're praying right now lift up your voice and pray as i pray we're asking jesus to do what he said he would do to save let's begin to pray Lord, your word says that all of heaven rejoices over one sinner who comes to repentance oh lord we know that heaven is rejoicing oh god heaven is partying right now oh god and we rejoice with heaven oh god lord and i thank you for your children father god lord i thank you lord that these be the children of god it doesn't matter what you've done before in the past your past is behind you father god the word says if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things are made new you are new this day Father, and right now we cry out, Jesus, Jesus, you save us, oh God. You deliver us, oh God. I don't care what the sin might be right now. Lord, we come against every unclean spirit right now by the blood of Jesus. Because in the name of Jesus, every unclean spirit bows. At the name of Jesus, lying bows. Lesbianism bows. Lust bows. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, insecurity bows. That lie of the enemy, it's bowing right now. You are everything God created you to be. You are who God says you are. You can do what he said you can do. In the name of Jesus, God, I declare these are your children. Lord, we thank you for the fruit of your harvest, oh God. Lord, and you are casting down chains and strongholds in the name of Jesus. And Father God, empower your people with the Holy Ghost. Father, we can't do this thing in our flesh. They can't do it by themselves. So fill them with the Holy Ghost. Breathe on them, Holy Spirit. Breathe on them, Holy Spirit. Empower them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless you, oh God. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Because, God, we're happy to give you a Christmas present. And it sows for your kingdom. We're happy to give you the gifts of our lives for your birthday gift, oh God. We bless you and we honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to bow. Let's continue to bow. Amen. Oh, Father. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, Heavenly Father. Oh, thank you for this time. Thank you for this privilege. Oh, Lord, to bow before your throne of grace. Oh, thank you for your mercies, Lord, that endureth forever. Oh, Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit that drew all those who have come forward, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that your word will not return to you, Lord, but it will accomplish those things for which you sent it forth, Lord. We call you on the name of Jesus, Lord, and we just give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and the glory because you alone are worthy. Hallelujah. Lord, you did what you said you was going to do. You say it's love that saved us. Love You loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever, Lord, we are whosoever, believe it, then you shall not perish but have everlasting life, Lord. We come, Lord. We surrender it all to you, Lord. We give it all to you, Lord. We give ourselves to you, Lord. We ask you to create in us a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within us, Lord. Search us, oh God, and know our hearts. Try us and know our thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in us. And lead us in the way of a lasting Father. Oh, Lord, we're coming because you said come. We're bowing because you said bow. We're asking because you told us to ask. You said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Lord, we're just asking. We're coming. We're seeking. And we know that we'll find our Savior who's already looking for us. Thank you for saving us, Lord. Thank you for forgiving us, Lord. Lord, thank you for setting us free, Lord. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, Father. Because you said you, you, Jesus went away to, and he was going to send the comforter to us, Lord. 
We know the comforter is here right now, Father. We just thank you for your goodness, and we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies, Lord. Now empower us, Lord. Make Seal these decisions in our heart, Lord, that it won't just be something we did today, but something we will do forever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Thank you for saving us. Oh, Lord, we love you because you first loved us. Oh, Lord, we're going to rest in you. We're going to wait on you. We're going to trust in you. We're going to believe you. We're going to whatever you said we want to do. We can't do it without you, though, Lord. Thank you for filling us. Thank you for saving us. In Jesus' name, amen. And the church said amen. Amen. The church said hallelujah. hallelujah. The church said praise the Lord.
Amen. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, said the Lord of hosts, that if I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings, and you shall not have room to receive them. Let us bow our heads. Our kind Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the little baby that you sent our way. We thank you, Lord, for the precious name of Jesus that you assigned to him. We thank you for the manger experience and where the angels sung their songs. And Lord, we thank you for his purifying blood. And we thank you, Lord, for being the Lord of the sunrise. And Lord, the creation, the word that was made flesh, who came and dwelt with us. Lord, you are the living word, and we thank you this morning for everything that you have done. And Lord, now we ask that you will bless these offerings today, that they may further the cause and present the word to the world that you are the child that was born to take away the sins of the world. And we praise you, Lord, for that. We say hallelujah to the highest. In Jesus' name we pray this morning. Amen. 